Now, if you're still using bricks theme styles in this fashion by doing just this, coming into something like your containers, coming into your width or your max width, and setting this to an arbitrary value, for example, 1366, you're doing it wrong. Now, you're probably asking, why am I doing it wrong, Paul? Because this kind of reduces the whole flexibility of what you can do inside your theme styles. There's a better way, and that's what I want to show you in this video. So let me know in the comment section which way you actually handle this right now. Drop a comment in there. Go on, I'll wait. Okay, so now I've got your feedback. Let's take a look at the much better way of using it. Forget using arbitrary values in most scenarios. For example, your max width, 1366, 1400, 1100, whatever you set inside you, delete it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna come back out of here, and this time we're gonna go into our variables. Now, if you're using a CSS framework like Core Framework or Advanced Thema, a lot of these things will automatically be set for you, and you should still be using them. So I'll show you that in a moment. But if you're not, and you're doing this yourself, this is the better way of doing it. So we know we want to have our value for our max width. And this is a simple example. And we'll take a look at some more other examples as we go through. So we're going to say max site width. Inside you, we can drop in your value. Now, you don't have to have, a, again, an arbitrary value inside you. If you want to use calculations, you want to use clamp, any of those kinds of things, we can do that here as well. This is a really simple example. So we're going to say, and we'll save it. Done. There's our site width. So now we have a variable in there. We can use that variable again and again and again. So in this example, it's a really simple one. So let's save the overall change we made and come back out. And this time we're going to come into our max width, click our little variables icon. And from there, we've got our max site width. Drop that inside there. Job done. So now, why am I saying this is the better way of doing it? Because you have one centralized location, one source of truth. You want to make a change, you don't have to come back into your theme styles. You can literally come over into your classes and variables and change this to whatever you want. So you want to change it to 1400? Not a problem. Change it to 1400. Hit save and you changed it. So we now have one centralized location. And the same thing goes for things like padding, margin, spacing, and so on. So now let's say we want to set up our typography. We could come back into our theme styles, come into our typography options, and we could set some values inside you. For example, you could set your body to be 15 pixels, 16 pixels, whatever you generally use. But again, the problem comes in, if you want to employ a fluid typography scale, this really doesn't work that well. So we're gonna go back and use some variables. Let's come back into our variable section. So then we could use something like a fluid type scale calculator. Sounds complicated, it's not. What we're doing here is we're setting up a fluid typography scale. So as we scale up and down in different kinds of browser windows, different kind of browser sizes, different devices, we get the benefit of the text scaling proportionally, not having those horrible jumps between different breakpoints. So by using something like this, we can set up the variables to handle it. So for example, our minimum size on our mobile could be 16 pixels tells us the screen width of 400 pixels and the type scale ratio, and then your maximum on desktop. So again, you can set things up in here. So we'll say maximum on here is going to match up to our sort of max screen width. So we can say 1400, for example. You then got your type scale from small, your base, which is your one rem, in other words, 16 or 19 pixels. Hopefully you understand what we're saying there. Then your medium, your large, XL, and so on. You can set a prefix. So let's just set this to be text, for example rounding, set what you want up inside you if you want to fall back to various different things. You can see a rem value in pixels, so 16, you get the idea. So then we've got our type scale set up. And as you can see, there's our text base, our one-to-one, -one, as it were. As you can see, one rem is all set up. All we need to do is copy this to our clipboard, head back into bricks, and from there, we're going to choose to import, and we can now just drop in that little bit of code, import those variables, and there we now have our fluid typography scale. So we can start to use these. Let's again, save this, come back out. This time, we're gonna go into our typography. There's our body text, let's click on it, click our variables, and from there, we're gonna choose our text base, which is our one-to-one. -one. And the same thing could be handled with things like your colors. So again, we could come back into our variables, and we can add a color variable in. So let's just say this is gonna be our primary color. Set primary, set the color inside here, We'll drop our value in, there we go. We'll hit save, save here. There's our color set into our color palette. Again, now all we need to do is go back and we'll say we want to set our color. So we'll come back into our body text, expand this, come into our color chip. From there, we're going to change this over to raw. 
inside here, you can see we've got our variables. We can select our variable from here. There's our primary selected job done. So now if you want to make any changes, all you need to do is come into your variables and change what you want. So you want to change your primary, click inside here, change your primary to whatever you want. As you can see, we've got the ability to change this using a nice color editor. So maybe we want to change this to blue and we want to adjust it to be a little bit lighter, less saturation, hit save. Job done. We've now changed our color. And then everywhere that's referenced, so our entire theme style, so our entire website that uses it has access to that color. Now, this is a really, really simple example. And you could easily build up quite a comprehensive set of variables here you could use. And you could then easily then export your theme styles and use that as a starting point. However, if you're using something like Core Framework or Advanced Themas Framework, you could easily tap into the variables that have already been created and use exactly the same method to set up your theme styles. Let me quickly demonstrate. Here we have a page layout inside Bricks, and I've got Advanced Themas Framework set up and installed. We can access all the options for this by coming to the AT menu and into our AT Framework. And inside there, there's all our options. So the cool thing about Advanced Themas Framework is that this works inside Bricks itself. So like we've seen how to set up our own variables, all these have been set up and they're editable, totally editable, but all set up inside the variable manager inside Bricks. So we come out of this and go into our variable manager. You see all our variables are already inside you and everything is nicely set up for us into nice organized categories. So our colors, typography, and so on. And again, you can see inside you, very similar to what we use that fluid typography scale to create, all been done for us. Again, another nice thing about using Advanced Themas Framework is all these settings have been transferred over into our theme styles. But obviously, you don't need to handle it. That way, you could manually do this if you wanted to. And if we come into our theme styles, and open this up, you'll see if we go into our elements, for example, open our container, you can see inside there, our max width, our row gap and so on have already been set up. And it's using the variables that Advanced Themas Framework or Core Framework, if you're using that, have actually set up for us. So we're tapping into that variable setup. It's a much more flexible way of working, which gives you one centralized source of truth. So if you're still doing it by adding in arbitrary values like pixels and rems and ems and think you're optimizing your workflow, this is way, way better. But as I said at the beginning of the video, let me know how you're currently handling this. Are you using this kind of method? Are you using a framework yourself? Are you using variables yourself and setting all that up manually? Or are you still using the typical original way where you'd arbitrarily insert values, things like pixels and rems and so on? Let me know in the comment section down below. If you learned something new from this video, also drop a comment in there as well. As always, all applicable links are in the description. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tetzel. Until next time, take care.